Hey, Brother Roy here, Old School Bible Baptist Ministries. We are delving in to our next video on our series, Are You Nuts for Nuggets? Nuts for Nuggets. We are using Brother Kevin Mann's First Mention Study Bible. That's uh, Kevin Mann, M-A-N-N, -N, First Mention Study Bible. Google it and get you one. They are nice. And uh, giving you a lot of teases with these nuggets in here. And uh, I'll tell you what, it's just groundbreaking work, and I'm really appreciating it. We've just got to the book of Joshua. So let's, let's, let's pray, and then we'll, what? Get your cup of mud, and we'll man up and go digging for nuggets. Father, thank you for today. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the blood that was shed, our salvation, your holy Bible. And uh, now just bless us as we dig up some nuggets in Joshua. Amen. 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 So uh, uh, Joshua is uh, six letters, the sixth book of the Bible. Six is the number for man. Joshua has 24, four times six chapters. Joshua is a picture of the second advent, the second coming of the God-man, Jesus Christ. Joshua is a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. His name is the same name as Jesus. Uh, see Acts 7, 5. Six is the number for man, and Joshua is the sixth book of the Bible. His name has six letters. And Joshua 1.11 Within three days, that is the length of time since the death, burial, and resurrection and ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ. If our calendar were right, we would now be entering within the three days. We have been two days since then. Before the third day, we will see the rapture of the church, the tribulation period, and the second advent. The second advent will begin the millennium, and it will all be done within three days. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. So, Joshua 1.18. Uh, that's uh, 18. That's uh, 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 three times six. Uh, and here is a verse with an address that is a multiple of six. And uh, man, and the sixth man, uh, the sixth word in the verse is rebel, uh, which is the number 13, and with 36, six times six words in the verse, this is a bad combo. <laughs> Amen. In Joshua 2, we are introduced for the first time to a woman named Rahab, the harlot. The spies came into the harlot's house and lodged there. There are reasons why the spies sought out persons on the low end of the social ladder as Rahab. Uh, uh, she had no morals. Uh, and very likely there was no civic loyalty uh, or any love lost between those citizens of Jericho and herself. You need something, do something shady, go where the criminals are. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so uh, she had probably experienced much heartache and ridicule from those who she lived around there at Jericho. The spies sought out the subculture of the city to protect their identity from the townspeople whom they were covertly spying on. Many unsavory characters no doubt frequented her establishment. So the spies were very safe in approaching and undesirable as Rahab without blowing their cover. This tactic is employed today in our culture by those who have slipped into our country in order to overthrow our civilization. Rahab, doctrinally, is a picture or type of those Gentiles who give aid, comfort, and protection to the Jews during the Great Tribulation period while the Jews are being persecuted by the man of sin known as the beast or Antichrist. The harlot was easy to find. Her window shutters were painted red. The front door was painted red. Uh, thus, we get the term red light district. Red is the color of sin, whoredom, war, blood, and uh, treacherous behavior. Rahab lived 
on the town wall near the roof where her red shutters were open or place could be seen for miles away when the scarlet cord was placed in the window uh, uh, of the open shutters it took the form of a cross Rahab's reward for helping the Jews is given to her by Joshua after the city is taken Rahab was granted her life the lives of her father mother brothers sisters and all that she had and a promise of a safe place in Israel to dwell in exchange of her help. Matthew 25, 31 through 46 describes this in detail in a time after the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many will be allowed to live in the millennium because of their helping the Jews during the tribulation period. Joshua 2, 9, Rahab knew seven things that she verbalized to the spies. The Lord hath given you the land. Your terror is fallen upon us. All of the inhabitants faint because of you. The Lord dried the Red Sea. You destroyed Sihon and Og. Our hearts did melt. The Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. That is seven good things for a sinner to know. Joshua 2.18, the life line of scarlet thread, a bloodline, uh, if you please. Uh, my lifeline is the precious blood of Jesus. This is probably not the first time a man had been let out through her window or allowed to hide on a roof. The first use of scarlet is in Genesis 38.24, and the word is associated with whoredom, uh, the whoredom of Tamar. Tamar. Here we have a harlot putting a scarlet line in the window. That is where we get the word picture of a red light district. By the way, the name Rahab means wide, large, or broad. Therefore, when a female is referred to as a broad, she's being spoken of as a harlot such as Rahab. The whore of Babylon in Revelation 17 wears the color scarlet. A side note on the color scarlet. Uh, we see that when the gold, golden table of showbread was to be transported by the priest to another location, that it was first covered by a cloth of blue, that's heavenly color, upon which all of the utensils were placed. And above that covering of blue, they placed a covering of scarlet colored linen, depicting the truth that God, gold, became man, scarlet, the color of blood, and that the God-man became sin, scarlet, the color for sin, for man. Amen. Amen. Joshua 3, 4, we see a picture of the 2,000 years of the church age, the death, burial, and resurrection, the ark, Jesus, in the water and out of the water, uh, the Lord, your, your God, the Father, and the Levites, the Holy Spirit, 2,000 cubits, for you have not yet passed this way here to four. For 2,000 years, the church has been passing over the deep to get to the shore of heaven that is paid for by the blood of Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ entered the river of judgment to roll back the waters for the believers to cross over into the promised land. In Joshua 5, 2, the circumcising of the males who were born in the wilderness is said to be the second circumcision. There must be a cutting away of the flesh before there can be any victory. The Christian life is one of dying to self, mortifying the flesh, walking in newness of life. The flesh is cut away by sharp knives, the word of God, which is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. This is a picture of the second or the spiritual circumcision of Colossians 2.9. Now, these series of events in dispensational order. The children officially came out of the wilderness when they crossed over Jordan on the 10th day of the month, Abib, which is also the day that the Israelites were commanded to take unto them a lamb for the Passover that was to be eaten on the 14th at even. All the males that were born in the wilderness were circumcised, removing the reproach of Egypt from off of them. They're called the second circumcision, a picture of all believers who are born again being spiritually circumcised in Colossians 2.11. 
Four days later, on the 14th of Abib, at even, before dark, they sacrificed and ate the Passover, and immediately the angel of the Lord appears with a sword drawn in his hand, proclaiming himself as the captain of the Lord's host, and gave one-on-one -on -one battle instructions to Joshua. This is the doctrinal and dispensational lineup as presented in the AV 1611, the Lord Jesus Christ first coming to earth as a lamb to be our Passover, removing all the sins of the world. After, the, after three days in the tomb, he is resurrected from the dead, ascends to the Father's right hand, where he is interceding for all born-again believers. After 2,000 years, the Lord Jesus Christ returns to earth at what is called his second coming, with a sword coming out of his mouth to destroy all of the enemies as the King of kings and Lord of lords. Then, when all the enemies are defeated, the Lord Jesus divides out the inheritance to those who served him faithful on this earth. See Joshua doing so beginning in Joshua 18, and the land is inhabited with a perfect leader, the Lord Jesus Christ. Sequence for the new believer in Christ. Gilgal represents the first entrance into the new life, the first preparations for combat, the first death to the flesh, a source of apostasy, a source of warning, kings were anointed, we will meet the king, encamping and training for the troops, and a post-tribulation rapture. Joshua is the sixth book in the King James Bible. Chapter 6 of the sixth book, we have the city of Jericho, Jericho proclaimed as being accursed and is burnt with fire and the walls fell flat to allow the Israelites to enter unhindered. There are multiple 13s represented in the numbers below concerning the trips that the priests made around the city. With all those sixes and 13s, there must be a curse lurking nearby. And show sure enough, he shows up in chapter 7. Achan, who transgressed in the accursed thing, the word accursed appears 13 times in Joshua. The only thing saved out of the city were those under the scarlet line in the harlot's house, a picture of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ saving whosoever wills of the accursed world. Joshua 7, 1, the man named Achan of the children of Israel took of the accursed thing and thereby condemned himself and his entire family. His name means troublesome. His name appears a total of six times in the book of Joshua. He led his, and he and his family died by stones and fire in the valley of Achor. Joshua 7.21, here is the first and only use of the word Babylonish in, regard, in regards to the garment that Achan took, purple and scarlet, no doubt. The word Babylon, Babylons, Babylonian, and Babylonish appear a total of 299 times in the Bible. 299 equals 13 times 23. Babylon was the first kingdom spoken of in the Bible. Genesis 10, and it was under the hand of Nimrod, the 13th from Adam, a type of the Antichrist, one world order. See Genesis 10, 10. Joshua 10, 11 is a, a picture of the Lord fighting against the Antichrist and his armies with great hailstones at the end of the tribulation period. Joshua 10 and 12, the only use of the capital M moon in Scripture. As it references the second advent of the Lord. Joshua 12, 4, the remnant of the giants. The word giants appears 13 times in the Bible, and the word giant appears seven times in the Bible. The giant is always a picture of the fallen angels and Satan who spawned them. Joshua 12, 21, the word Megiddo. 
place of crowds, 13 letters, Megiddo and Armageddon, all, all combined, same area, appear 13 times in the Bible. Uh, these are all names referring to the same area of land. The king of Megiddo just happens to be mentioned as the 26th, 2 times 13 of the 31 kings mentioned. The word Armageddon appears one time in the Bible at Revelation 16, 16. That is the area that the Lord Jesus Christ will return to at the second advent when he comes to earth in glory to defeat the Antichrist and the United Nation armies that have gathered against Israel and the Lamb. Joshua 12, 13, 12 22, the first and only use of the word soothsayer in Scripture. Balaam, uh, which means not of this people, the son of Beor, which means burning, is a type of the false prophet in Revelation 13, 11, that represents the kingdom of the beast, a.k.a. the Antichrist. Joshua 18.24, <laughs> let me try to pronounce this, Shephar HaAmonai, the, the third longest name in the Bible. The first is uh, in Isaiah 8.1, the second longest is in Job 3.8. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Joshua 22.5, the tribes that inherited the other side of Jordan were told to do seven things. Take diligent heed, love the Lord your God, walk in his ways, keep his commandments, cleave unto him, serve him with all your heart, serve him with all your souls. Joshua 22.8, the tribes were to return with a sevenfold blessing, much riches, much cattle, much silver, much gold, much brass, iron, and raiment. Joshua 22.16, this chapter contains the word rebel, rebellion, a total of six times. Joshua 23, 13. Uh, uh, the 26th word in the verse is the first use of the word snares, snares, traps, scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes. Adequate content for sixes and thirteens. Amen. Then uh, Joshua 24, 11, God gave them Seven nations named here that were defeated by Israel under Joshua. Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, Amorites, and the Jebus Jebusites. Seven is the Bible number for completeness. Then finally in Joshua 24, 26, and 27, stones as a witness. Revelation 2, 17, name in a white stone, Luke 19, 40. The rocks would cry out, out of the hardness of even the stoniest heart will a witness be summoned that will testify that the Lord God Jehovah is one God, and every knee shall bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father, even the stones of the earth will cry out against me. Amen. Amen. And, uh. Those are a sampling of the nuggets in the book of Joshua. Of course, in our next video, we'll go in to the book of Judges. You know I love you, and we'll see you in the next one.